Okay, this is a admittedly pretty crude drawing of the battery cell that I'm uh, demonstrating in, in uh, this video. And if you uh, see the top, the, uh, you have two graphite rods for the positive and negative electrodes. These are one-eighth inch rods. And essentially I drill a one-eighth hole in the, in the top of the plastic mason jar, one pint mason jar. And uh, like I say, getting the, uh, the top electrode there which is one disc, the one, the one that plates to zinc, is uh, by far the most difficult thing getting a, a carbon to carbon there. Essentially I, I kind of uh, soaked the, the, the graph, the <laughs> I soaked the, uh, the carbon felt in the zinc bromide solution and kind of heated it up until it turned kind of hard like a, a salt and then I just pushed the rod in and as long as you electrolyze it pretty quickly uh, the zinc will metal that it plates out will bind the two together. That was a little trick. There's there's other ways. As a matter of fact, the top of whole electrode can be made out of zinc and probably should be made out of zinc. But the um, uh, in this cell configuration, the, the zinc electrode actually is where you're plating out uh, most of the active material and so that actually will in that will the surface area of the top zinc electrode and the bottom essentially sends a uh, sets how much capacity your battery has. Uh, the measured uh, after charging for four hours uh, the open circuit voltage was 1.77 volts, about 1.8 volts right where it should be and the short circuit current was about 0 0.95 amps. Now it's, it would be very trivial to add another two you know ev every one little disc that you put on top there uh, which was sized just to fit through the top of a pint mason jar it adds another four three or four amp hours on it so you can actually stack you know three four five six uh, carbon felts that way and you could kind of stitch them together with uh, with carbon thread uh, to increase the capacity of the battery the bottom of the battery essentially you have the carbon rod just pushing down three slightly larger discs of carbon felt and you always want a little bit more carbon felt on the bottom because it kind of uh, when the bromine forms it's denser than it's denser than the rest of the fluid and so you want it staying near near the bottom since uh, when it stays near the bottom it doesn't get up to the it doesn't self discharge on the zinc electrode and there are Okay, this is the electrode assembly for the uh, zinc bromide battery. And this is a nice plastic uh, one pint top for a mason jar. And this is a little piece of uh, carbon felt that I uh, cut out the hole of there. And these are one eighth uh, carbon rods. The ra how I got that uh, carbon rod to stick in there is I saturated it with zinc bromide solution, then heated it up until it was kind of like a you know, it kind of melted into like a like a well like a melted salt and then I just actually punched a little hole in it and stuck it in there and once it's charged up it'll be mostly zinc and it'll hold on there very well uh, to keep it from shorting out the the, uh, the central one there will be uh, coated with silicone except for the tip where it'll push down into the secondary electrode that's what the central one is is the uh, bromine electrode so that's how it's done and I'll show you some more cell details here pretty soon. Thanks. Okay, here's a second letter, Luke. You can see from the red uh, silicone how I uh, and it, you just don't want zinc dendrites to to go in and short out your uh, bromine electrode, and you don't really have to do it all the way down there uh, as far as I did, but especially since. Bromine is usually not too good on most plastics, but for this prototype cell, this is okay. Just to see how there's other configurations that you can make a, a zinc bromide cell, and so that's just let that cure overnight, and I'll show the next one will be where it all put together, and we'll start charging it up. Okay. Okay, this is uh, my test cell. And this is after about three hours at one amper hour, so about three amper hours. It's separating into a nice zinc top part and a nice dense bromine bottom part. 
and it start it works uh, pretty well so far. Its open circuit voltage is at almost exactly 1.8 volts, and its direct short right now is about 0.75 amps, maybe a little bit more. And uh, that's it. Okay, this is the charged up cell after about 24 hours just sitting it. It looks like it probably still has most of the capacity because you, you can see some little things hanging down from front of which are dendrites. That means uh, most of the zinc is there. So the self-discharge of the cell isn't too bad. There's still plenty of bromine on the bottom too, so that tells me that it hasn't really discharged very much. I'll make a few measurements here just to see, make sure the open circuit voltage and the and seeing what the the short circuit current is after sitting around for 24 hours.